What is going on YouTube? Hey, back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are going to be looking at XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, as well as Solana and the S&P 500. Now, specifically in today's video, we need to go over the continued consolidation and uh, new kind of technically indicators that, that have been forming on some of the major things that we watch. As you guys can see with the S&P 500, we've now kind of almost discovered that we're forming what could be a descending fractal here, starting off our uh, continued correction to the downside side at this point in time the current market has only fallen a tiny bit but you can see it is clearly switched up direction at its peak we've fallen at most two and a half percent here a little bit less but you can see we started to reverse and now we're starting to create lower high lower lows which might continue its descent to the downside here and that could trigger the these other cryptocurrencies to follow suit uh, and we'll see if that actually happens but anywho lots of these cryptos are still trending inside their technical indicator you can see clear as day on XRP. We're still filling in this gap here. And uh, sooner or later, we are going to make that decision. And hopefully it is to the upside and will complete the ascending broadening wedge, which eventually breaks downwards. But uh, ideally, it would be bullish for a short period of time. You can see the continued consolidation within Ethereum as well. We did find a price ceiling. This is major resistance up here. And we are still filling in the gap nicely nonetheless but filling it in is definitely uh happening right now and that same thing is much more clear and pronounced on bitcoin here as we're creating an ascending triangle these typically do break bearish in my opinion here but you can see filling in the gap quite nicely the longer we hang out here though the bill uh the more you know steam will will build and the pressure and then at some point we will make a decision hopefully it's to the upside here and we break into all-time highs as you guys know the having is literally in today's the 12th so in a couple of days i would say the um what is this like maybe nine days left eight days left and hopefully we get that decision we shall see but uh it's a decision nonetheless and i'm excited to see the results of that so i uh, definitely stick around for that and then lastly looking at solana we are still filling in our gap between our sideways channels here so decision is going to have to be made shortly uh for that as well anywho uh before we go any further i want to give a huge shout out to one EX trading board for sponsoring today's episode for those that don't know one EX has made a cutting edge technology Technology trading for uh for all your needs pretty much it is a all-in-one trading board that gives you a news feed gives you a screener market sentiment indicators leading volatility indicators ai assistant and a market balance indicator as well it's actually really cool and i highly recommend you guys check it out but more information on them will be uh right after this but with that being said make sure to smash that like button turn on post notifications subscribe and let's jump right into today's video i want to give a huge shout out to one ex for sponsoring today's episode as with all cryptocurrency projects Please do your own research and never invest anything you can't afford to lose. So guys, 1EX has just launched their new program called AI News. Essentially, AI News is a cutting edge platform that unites the most effective tools for successful trading in one window, seamlessly integrating AI driven news feeds, advanced trading tools, and a robust risk management system. Today, we are experiencing a shift and technology transfer from conventional control theory to modern financial engineering. And this is exactly what 1EX has created. In simpler terms, AI News is a service that gathers gathers information and technical analysis tools based on mass media, socials, blogs, and a lot more. And then they gather that news from global media sources and then reduce it into one to maybe two sentences using AI technology. You see, the main innovation of 1EX AI News is that an assets price movement is charted together with the news sentiment, meaning traders can see how the news alters the price, allowing you to get to know when volatility is about to happen. This service is part of their efforts to bring more objective market indicators to trading. And in their opinion, it's a balance between subjective and objective trading indicators and is one of the keys to maximum trading efficiency and successful trading overall. So guys, let me show you what it's about. What I like the most is that they offer a free version. So after signing up, which if you do, make sure to check your spam folder for the verification code. It might end up in there. Um, but then you will be brought to the trading terminal page, which houses all the information information you need. Not only is their Ask AI an incredibly powerful feature, but you can also add an assortment of widgets to the terminal. The first is called the newsfeed, which essentially the whole market is in the palm of your hand. Their AI collects and chooses only useful news according to your preferences and topics. It also gathers information from Telegram channels as well. Next is the screener, which allows you to quickly identify market inefficiencies. Then there's the market sentiment indicator, which is an analytical 
tool developed using sentiment analysis and uses various data points and social signals to help traders identify trends and make informed decisions. Then there's the market balance indicator, the AI assistant, and I believe the uh, anticipatory volatility indicators. All in all, I highly recommend you check out 1EX. Now, on top of it all, not only should you take advantage of their free to use trading platform, but you should also be checking out their native token called 1EX, which is crucial to the 1EX ecosystem. It's currently listed on CoinMarketCap and for trading, it's on MEXC. And as you guys can see, it's actually been doing incredibly well. So with all that being said, make sure to join 1EX AI News now and check out the links in the description for more information. I'll also put a link to where it's listed on the CoinMarketCap as well. Otherwise, let's get back into the technical analysis. So guys, yesterday we made a video basically saying that I found the breakout point within XRP and I still hold strongly with that with a lot of these cryptocurrencies to be honest with you there's lots of technical indicators forming here and this a decision is going to have to be made quite quickly uh because we are on a timeline and that timeline does have an expiration date and it should happen fairly soon and I'll explain more in a second currently the markets are consolidating 75 on the fear and greed index nonetheless here you can see bitcoin currently up only 0.3 percent ethereum not so much most of these cryptos on the past 24 hours isn't really doing anything but on the weekly we are actually up almost double digits with a lot of cryptos here ton queen up 38 percent a lot of these others are up kind of uh maybe ha uh you know 10 no 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 five to like seven percent across the board here if i was to average it out which really isn't that bad all in all but to dive into the technical analysis looking at xrp we're still in our consolidation platform here Lots of these cryptocurrencies are still filling in the gap. And you can see XRP is no, uh, you know, is is one of those that is still consolidating here. It's no exception is what I meant to say here. You can see us, there's a clear downtrend that we discovered a while ago here. It started off at about 64 cents. And since then, we've had this downtrend we've been able to map out. And we've had multiple uh, retests here. One, two, three, four five points of contact, which is great uh, because this really does show how strong this downtrend is. It's good and bad. But as we fill this in, we've been bouncing off supports. We found a new bottom support and we've just continued to fill it in. And most recently, we've been using it as a means of resistance. We have a major downtrend right here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five points of resistance breaking this, retesting it, and doing nothing but correcting and rejecting off this resistance here. And it is pushing us down. We're now sandwiched between a rock and a hard place. We have the moving average holding us up the green and red bands, and this top resistance holding us down. And like I said yesterday, and I'll, I will say it again, clear as day, what we are looking for is a breach above yellow resistance for us to buy in on an aggressive scale, above green as a moderate scale, and above red as a conservative scale, with the intentions of going up to 75 to 80 cents quite quickly here. However, we don't have much time left. At most, it could be the 21st of April, which would be right around the halving. Um, and at the earliest, it could be today, it could be tomorrow. At some point, we do need to make a decision, and typically, these do break earlier than expected. And the reason I say wait for the daily is because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times we've seen wicks throughout the day where we do head up above it and things would say, oh, maybe it's time to buy in. You do. And then we confirm closure like this. We swing all the way up. You'd say, okay, we're doing incredible. And then by the end of the day, we close right back down below it and you actually get screwed on the trade, which is why we got to be patient as well as conservative here so that we don't get burned as we've done as we've done in the past by jumping the gun now moving forward from xrp looking at solana here again not i know this is going to sound like a broken record but we are continuing to trend um you know sideways it's definitely good though because you can see the last time we were at this i'm going to circle it we've done this twice this point we're currently at 50 on the r side the last time we were there we were at 61 about 61, maybe we could say 62. So you can see how just us being at the same price level has lowered ourselves dramatically on the relative strength indicator. We're still in an uptrend. We're still creating higher lows. We still look good. And at some point or another, we are going to come either back down to contact this, which we'll be able to short, or hopefully we can just fill in this cap here, continue to trend. That's pretty much what we're doing here. There's really no buying opportunity yet. We haven't discovered any sort of support or resistance for the most part here, uh, like an uptrend, like an ascending triangle or anything of the matter where we could say, okay, here's a downtrend. Here's this, like 
that there's a some sort of triangle or pattern technical indicator forming. The only thing we got going for us right now is a clear sideways channel. We have a clear price ceiling, a clear price for floor where we've retested the top new, uh, twice now, numerous times, and then the bottom support, we've tested it about three times now. Uh, we haven't broken through either of them. So we know if we can confirm closure below support, we can short it. We close above price ceiling, we could buy in and long. And it's the same pattern just continued further. So that's what we expect to see happen. Moving forward from that, looking at Ethereum and Bitcoin, Ethereum is a bit harder to trade. It's not as fluid, which is why I'm just going to say whatever um, I'm about to say about Bitcoin, apply that to Ethereum, and it's about the same thing. So currently with Bitcoin, or at least put Ethereum on the back burner for a little bit here. With Bitcoin, we have a higher low higher or uh, a higher low pattern forming here which is creating some sort of ascending triangle we have price ceiling we have two of them actually if we want to play it conservative it would be ab above the all-time high chart right here but as we head higher we're creating newer lows higher than the last time which is definitely a good sign problem is we're clearly getting rejected off price ceilings here the good thing is we are so close to the halving. Like I said, a week left. And by the latest, we would be in the, the 10th of May. The earliest could be today or about average about the, yeah, kind of the end of April would be that kind of uh, final stretch here. We haven't broken through this resistance just yet. It's possible that we can. Um, but if we break through this, it's an aggressive buy. We break through this, it's more moderate to conservative here. And that's pretty much what we have to look at. Hopefully we don't break through yellow resistance here. We can continue to climb, but it is possible. But again, we have a beautiful ascending triangle. It is clear as day. We are ready and willingly you know, I am prepared to be buying in for either of these uh, that decides to break. We break through floor on the daily. We're going to buy in and short. We break through the, the ceiling on the daily. We can buy in and long. So it's really hit or miss at this point here. I know I sound like a broken record, but that's what you guys need to hear. The quicker you could solidify this in your head that this is what we are dealing with, that this is what we need to see, um, the better we'll be when it comes time to actually buy in and trade. Uh, and lastly, looking at the S&P 500 here, we're now starting our descent lower, which is pretty crazy. It's about time, though. We've had on the relative or on the relative strength indicator, beautiful symmetrical triangle just started to break down as expected here. And then lastly, this ascending fractal, higher lows, higher highs, is now starting to create lower highs, lower lows. And hopefully that can scale us up down a bit lower where we can, um, you know, have another opportunity to put money in before we head even higher up. So. I'm excited across the board. Hopefully you guys are too, uh, but I'll keep you posted. And then obviously, I don't know, maybe some of you guys can tell there isn't much of a change, but I literally moved apartments and I just moved this office yesterday. I spent all day moving apartments. So this is actually a different apartment than what I'm normally doing. Now, what's funny is it is the same exact apartment as my previous one. However, it's facing the opposite way as the normal one is. So literally everything is laid out opposite so my fridge is on the opposite side the doorway is on the opposite side this room is identical but it is reversed which means these windows here that used to be behind me used to be on the other wall that i'm facing however the problem is um i wanted to still record facing you guys in this direction because if i didn't i'd have to be facing like this And I really am not cut out because I've always filmed it with my right arm on the desk looking at you guys like this. So that's why these windows are back here. They're not usually there. And I and it would have been great to not have them there. But this is the way we're going to record. And I, you're just gonna have to, I'm just going to have to deal with it myself because it just makes sense. It's annoying to have these windows here, but it is what it is. But maybe some of you guys picked up that that's not usually there. And that's because I moved over into a new apartment. But anywho, that's it for today's video. Smash the like button, turn on post notifications. Huge shout out to 1DX again for sponsoring today's episode. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Peace.